What is up folks? Thank you for checking into the Aorta skill class and today's progression is designed to get you your first handstand push-up. We at Aorta believe that you have to get those strict reps in first before you move on to the kipping versions. Just as a principle, always build the base and then add on the fancy stuff. So today we're gonna go through a movement series that will give you the strength to move perfectly through that strict handstand push-up. And if you are good with it, move on from there. For everything we do overhead, it's important that our wrists shoulders and body temperature are raised and well warmed up. So if you don't have an idea on how to do that, just check our solid warm up. Click on here, use it, and then get right back to us. If you wanna do your own work, perfect. Before we go into a handstand push-up, you need to understand the concept that it is basically raising yourself, your body, from a headstand into a handstand. So before going onto the wall and practicing the handstand or then eventually the handstand push-up, we're gonna start with a very basic headstand. For this, I want you to do the following. You place your hands roughly shoulder width and then you take about one forearm length to the center and that's gonna be your point of contact for the head. And this stand is called the tripod stand. Okay, you don't wanna be in line with your head and hands, you wanna have like a triangle. Good. You place your head and then you start by raising your feet. First in a tucked position, elbows are tucked in. And if you feel comfortable, you can raise your feet. In the headstand, it is important that your perfect position is not gonna be a straight line. I mean, you wanna be straight, but your feet are not going to be right above your head. Instead, your body is slightly angled so that you carry both weight on your head, but also your arms and hands. It's totally fine if you don't feel comfortable doing it freestanding and instead moving the pad to a wall. Just make sure you don't raise your feet up too quickly, but you don't need to be scared if you do it right in front of a wall, you can't fall over, okay? So, hands placed, and even if you're too fast, there's the wall, and you can move yourself into the perfect headstand position. Okay, we're moving on to the second part of the basics, which is the handstand, but not the freestanding one we're going today, into the wall-supported handstand. You're gonna place your hands right next to the ab mat where you just had it, or to anything that you wanna put below your head. Could be a pillow, could be anything. And then you're going to kick up into the wall. If this is too tough, you try to kick up slightly higher with every time and then you're trying to reach for the wall with an angled leg. If you feel comfortable, you can add the other leg and then press out at the top. You wanna be able to hold this position for at least 30 seconds before even thinking about a handstand push-up. It is important that you master the basics first and then move on to higher level progression pieces. Essentially, you realize that the handstand push-up is just raising your body weight from the headstand position into a handstand position while being supported by the wall. Now, to get you stronger for the handstand push-up, we'll bring it back to the ground. Our first move for today is gonna be the pike push-up. And this is gonna be an assessment where we're trying to figure out how close can you get your feet to the hands. You can either do it far away Try to get your butt high. Or you can do it super close, like this. It is important that you keep your tripod position when doing the pike push-up. Press all the way through into a great handstand position. And with all body weight movements, we increase the difficulty by decreasing or increasing the lever angle, which means the closer you bring your feet to your hands, the harder it's gonna be. And if you can bring it super close, like in my last version, it's gonna be even harder than the handstand push-up. So, chances are you're not gonna be able to bring it super close in the first place, but increase the difficulty and bring it closer over time. 
Let's say you have super tight hamstrings, but you're still strong. What are you gonna do? You're gonna bring it over to the bench. So instead of just doing it on the ground, you put your feet on the bench, bring them together, and then doing the pike push-up from here. Or option two why you might want to use a bench is because you're not strong enough yet to even practice with pike push-ups on the ground. And a bench could also help you by just decreasing the lever and the body weight used. So you put your knees on the bench and then do your pike push-up like this. Once you're able to do maybe five or six bench supported pike push-ups with really, really good form, you're now ready to take on this specific handstand push-up on the wall. And before you know how to approach it, it's important to do a first assessment and to figure out where you stand right now. So in that case, you need first to figure out what the lowest position is you can comfortably press out from. And then the second is, what is the lowest position you can lower yourself to without bumping into the ground with your head? Let me show you what I'm talking about. I was still able to press out in the handstand push-up position from there. Now I'm trying a lower position and see if I can still press it out. All right, wasn't there today. I couldn't get the press out, so I know my lowest position is the one that I tried before that. And I'll remember this for the progressions that you'll get later in this video. Now, moving on to the eccentric part. So where is the point that you can possibly lower yourself to without jamming your head into the ground? So now I'm putting the ab mat away and try to go one step lower. That was still perfect. So now I'm going on a deficit and I'll attempt that. Okay, you saw how I jammed my head into the ground there. I'm still not ready for that deficit yet. So I'm either gonna take 10 kilo plates, so a little thinner plates and attempt it again, or I'll take the ground as my base level for today. After assessing and knowing exactly where I stand on the handstand push-up, I'm gonna jump into the training part. So what I suggest you can do is you jump on an EMOM format. So every minute on the minute, you're gonna do some work for five minutes to start with. You're gonna take the lowest point you just made on the concentric handstand push-up, so the first version where you can still press out from, and you're gonna do one to two reps of good handstand push-ups every minute. Make sure you keep your elbows tucked and close to the body and press out using the triceps and the shoulders, and then also make sure to lower yourself slowly and pressing out controlled for one to two reps. I'll do the exact same thing for the eccentric part of the handstand push-up now. So lowering myself down. Make sure to lower yourself as slowly as possible down to the ground and make it super controlled. If you feel like when coming down you can handle another rep in that minute, you can do a second one. And for the first week you're gonna do five minutes as well. For the next few training sessions, how do you make it harder for yourself? Because you need a progression. You're gonna progress by using either volume. So you're doing, instead of the five minutes, maybe six in the next week, maybe seven in the next training session, and keeping the reps the same. Or if you feel like you can handle it, you can try to work on the deficit and slightly and slowly work yourself lower and lower and lower. It is important to not just do the movements once, you have to keep them doing continuously, and you wanna do them every time a little harder on yourself. That means in the next session, you're jumping from an EMOM for five minutes to six minutes and then seven minutes to get overall more volume of quality reps in every time you do it. Additionally, you're gonna use your pike handstand push-ups and also general pressing movements like the push-up and everything else you do for your pressing to support the handstand push-up. This is my strength suggestion, strength training suggestion that you can do. You start with 
five to six really tough concentric pike handstand push-ups of your choice. The hardest you can do. You then step onto the wall and you go into a handstand hold of 30 seconds. And you repeat this circle for three to four sets. Just make sure you get enough rest in between. You can take up to 60 to 90 seconds of rest so you're fresh for the next round. But if you're already there and you wanna make the handstand push up harder, here are three versions how to increase the difficulty even more. The first one is the deficit handstand push up. You build up some plates or a bench or whatever you have to increase the deficit and then you attempt the handstand push ups on there. The second version is gonna be the wall facing handstand push up. We're not gonna look away from the wall, but rather to the wall. This is gonna be even without a deficit, a lot harder than the other version. And the third one and last one for today is gonna to be the deficit handstand push-up on parallels, which is gonna be even harder than the ones we showed you before. Now, the parallels are gonna force you to keep your elbows in, and it's gonna be the real test for those who practice getting their elbows tucked in closely on all the previous exercises. Now have fun playing with all the movements and make sure you understand the concept that the longer the lever angle, the harder the move is going to be, but also the more range you use, the tougher the movement is going to be on you. Play with it, have fun, and please, if you like the video, like, share, and subscribe, and I'd love to see you in the next video.